FullTiltPoker.net presents Learn from the Pros. We continue to have a whole lot of fun, FullTiltPoker.net styles. We continue to learn from the pros, and everybody at home, put on your thinking camp, because joining us on the roundtable, next to the Professor Howard Letter is Daniel Negrano, 2004 Poker Player of the Year. What's going on, buddy? How are you? Not too much. Just excited about the hockey season. Yeah. Not, not the Leafs, though. Not looking so good. Where's your Matt Sundin jersey? Matt Sundin? I only wear that for special occasions, final tables. This is not FSN. a sin. All right, look, <laughs> did you see who you're sitting next to? How could it not be well, more I'm, special I'm talking than this? final tables. I haven't seen him at one recently. Okay, well, oh. <laughs> he, is, he is, though, a poker icon, Phil Helmuth. Phil, oh. good to see you. Introduce me that way. Let's go to Phil Gordon. Okay, Phil Gordon. Of I'm course not he, a poker icon. Well, we know you from Celebrity Poker, hosting that, but also a champion on the WPT Tour. Good to see you again. Always a pleasure. And also, Cloney Gown. First down to the scene in 2003. Howard's not going to hold it against you that you beat up on his sister, Annie Duke, and also Jennifer Harmon back then, but thanks for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. All right, guys, today's topic, slow play. Uh, words of advice for the amateur out there, Daniel. Well, the one thing I think you need to be careful of, especially when playing Texas Hold'em, is it's really risky to slow play with mediocre hands. You can slow play really, really strong hands, but too often I think people think they have top pair, a pair of jacks or something, and they think, ooh, I'm going to slow play. But there's so many dangerous cards that could come that I would say you want to be aggressive. That's the way to win. Do you get too cute out there, cloning? Can that happen uh, sometimes? I, I think that I agree with Daniel 100% there. You only really want to slow play a really strong hand that doesn't have a shot of getting. You want to give them enough where they can catch up with you, but not where they're going to they're going to beat you. So, I agree with Daniel. I, 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 I'd say the guy at this table who likes to slow play the most and has the most guts about doing it is is is, is Phil. I've seen him slow play hands that <laughs> well, I just you know, you I wouldn't I just I wouldn't even dream of doing You watched it. the Heads Up Championship uh, recently, and it was very interesting because, uh, you know, Chris Ferguson, I'd limp in with Queens, he'd move all in, and I'd jump out of my chair. I call, and I won that pot. Same thing with nines. I beat him. Those were the final two hands of two of our matches. But, and then Gabe Kaplan's announcing, and he's like, oh boy, that was a great play, that was a great play. But whenever I slow played like a pair of jacks and lost, he'd say, oh, I don't know, that was pretty risky play. And that's traditional poker thinking right there that if you're going to be slow playing with big pairs, uh, you're really setting yourself up to lose with the big pairs. And so there's this fine balance. You want to give people enough rope, but you know, not too much rope. And it's very difficult to do, and I rely on my reading of people when I start slow playing hands. If I know that they've beaten my strong hand, then I can fold my hand. So I can slow play hands, and then I love it when they've checked to me on the end, and now I know that the hand I've slow played is good. Now it's just a matter of choose the amount you want to get paid off. Don't slow playing, sorry, slow playing uh, adds, it makes it more difficult to play. Mm -hmm. When you play your hands aggressively and straightforwardly, you find yourself in less difficult situations. If you're a great reader of cards like Phil is, you can find, you, you can play his hands slowly because you know later you're not necessarily destined to lose everything. Where maybe an amateur or a rookie, would be in that same situation with the two aces and be like, well, I have to call and, and not know what he might know or Howard or any of these great players here. The, the key thing to remember is that there, there has to be a very specific reason to slow play. You just don't slow play because you've got a great hand. You slow play because you believe that your opponent has to catch up a little bit to put any more chips into the pot. Or, if that's not the case... Or because you figure your opponent's going to try to bluff you okay. all the time. Yeah, exactly. it, yeah, yeah. but it's, a, it's a, for a specific reason. You don't just don't slow play automatically because you have a great hand. Do you have to have a certain personality, Cloney, in order to do this? A certain temperament as well? No, you, I, think, I think there's a time that every player, even aggressive players, need to kick back a bit and slow play a hand. They, they, uh, you know, you want, and you have to know your player before you can still play a hand. You, you've got to know, like, like uh, Phil and them have said, that, you know, that uh, they're on a draw and they need to catch up with you. And then that way, if you, if you put them on that draw, then you can get away from the hand too if they do, like Phil uh, often and, and does. And to Cloney's point, especially an aggressive player. I was just going to say that exact especially, same especially thing. Yeah, an especially an aggressive player ought to slow play a hand every mm -hmm. once in a while. I was right. going to say exactly that because, because they're going to hang themselves. When they, you know, so many people coin aggressive players as being straightforward. They always bet. So when they check, they figure, well, they have nothing. So it's important to change gears. Mm -hmm. On the same token, you don't want to be that player that's always betting with nothing and then slow playing when you have a big hand. The key is to mix it up. Slow playing, playing fast, playing all these different situations differently. I actually got in trouble in that situation with Ted Forrest on the win, in the win tournament because uh, we had checked down a lot of hands together and the hand that I went out on you know, I actually got, I really got in trouble with him. I figured that he was going to mix up his play a little bit, um, and he makes a bet, and, and I hung myself. 
I play slow and not very well. Yeah, just I, to let I, you know. I mean, <laughs> I mean, one of the most suspicious things in poker is when an aggressive player like raises before the flop. You call. You're out of position, and then the flop comes, and you check, and they check. I it's mean, like, uh -oh. and there are a lot of there Bad are a lot signal. of players where when they check in that spot, you know. When a good a player, hand. when a good player calls a good size bet out of position, and there are not a lot of draws on the board, you can be fairly certain that uh, that you could be in some big trouble there. Well, guys, we appreciate your insight into slow play. To learn chat and play with the pros, go where they live. FullTiltPoker.com.